Good evening, everybody. Just uh, like to say a few words on trying to reduce the risk of bloat in calves. Since 2015, we've seen an increase in dairy cow numbers and also an increase in the, the whole area of compact calving. And so with that, we've seen to a fair degree an increase in, in the purchase of calf feeders on farm where about 20% of dairy farmers at the minute would be using of, of calf feeder, if not one or, or not two of an automated calf feeding system. Um, the whole idea of what's happened around this is that vets and regional laboratories are finding calves being brought in for post-mortems and in some way the calf feeder is leading to some way the, the element of bloat on the farm. Um, if we look at what bloat is, it's a multifactorial problem. It can't just be the gas that's been produced. It's a bacterium produces the gas. Normally, the likes of Clostridia bacteria, Cicinia bacteria, or it can be the ordinary good lactic acid bacteria themselves create, create the gas, or you're looking like Salmonella bacteria. But it's, it's not just one factor. It's not just the, ga the gas alone. It will generally be a combination, maybe hygiene, ready fermentable carbohydrates, like a bit of starter feed going in, or just calves under stress. But there'll be two or three factors that come together that create the perfect storm. The two types of bloat that we're looking at is basically abomasinal bloat and ruminal bloat. Now, abomasinal bloat is basically the fourth stomach. It's the fourth stomach that the calf is, is born with, as such as the monogastric. The rumen is very small and not functioning. So basically all your milk, your, your whole milk, your milk replacer is going into the abomasum and the flow rate through the abomasum will tend, to, level, will, will tend to, to control the level of gas production within the abomasum itself. So what basically is you get the, the bacterium feeding on the sugars producing gas. So we need to control basically anything that delays the abomasum emptying into the small intestine. If we look at the esophageal groove, um, we, we look at the esophageal group, basically it bypasses the room and ca when the cows are drinking their milk feed. So you want good esophageal group action. And anything that interferes with that will basically cause a, a leakage into the rumen and ca can cause rumen bloat in the very young calf. So abomasia bloat is generally under three weeks when there's no rumen. If you get a leak, a leak in the esophageal groove, you can get some rumen bloat on, under three weeks of age, but generally rumen bloat is later. And the kind of signs you get with bloat you're going to get is either um, you're going to get a calf kicking on the flank, you're going to get grinding the teeth, and with the older calves, you're, you're going to walk in some morning and you're going to find the calf dead, four to five weeks of age, good, strong calf. So if we're trying to reduce the risk. We need to look at poor hygiene. Again, as I said, it's not just the, the bacterium that caused the gas. You need to look at your, your 10 teeth feeder, or if, you, if you're looking at what Philip has there, your, your, your 50 teeth quad, you need to, it's not just good enough just to rinse it out with cold water. You need to be looking at soaking it with the likes of paracetic acid, to a certain degree so that you get those teats well, well cleaned out and also during the season to go through with those teats and check them that they're not leaking and if, if the problem again with the teats if they're leaking you're, you're not going to get good esophageal groove action with the calf the, te the, te the teats are going to be letting milk out too quick and basically the, the, ca the calf when it goes to, to suck through the its esophageal groove it's basically the milk is coming out too quick and it's going to leak into the room and in terms of calf feeders you need to set up your your feeding programs on them in terms of, of the washing systems. So most feeders are set up to feed or to, to feed three to four times a day, but the wash system should at least wash twice a day, uh, maybe at two in the morning or two in the afternoon. But ideally when you have a large amounts of calves on it, you need to be setting that to, to three washes. And you also need to be looking at the detergent that you're using, not to be using something that's in the dairy that's designed for a hot wash system. You need to be looking to, for something that will work at 50 degrees or, or less because that's the temperature the machines are, are, are going to, to wash at, no matter, regardless of brand. Um, in terms of poor colostrum management, what Emer was saying there earlier, you're looking at the one, two, three, three liters within two hours of the first feed. All I'd say to you in terms of, of um, uh, to do with bloat is that if, if you are using a stomach tube, just like Philip said, you want to be sure that you're using, you're replacing it if it's damaged and that you're, you're very careful using it, that you don't damage the vagal nerve that controls the opening and closing of the esophageal groove. Um, the final part of, of the, the risk on bloat in this section, looking at osmolality, and that's basically the solid contents of your milk and the flow of milk through the abomasum. And anything that delays the flow of, of your milk replacer or whole milk through the abomasum um, is allowing bacterium time to actually multiply on the sugars present and giving you a greater risk of bloat. And if you have the likes of Clostridium bacteria in there, you're going to get harmful toxins being produced that basically will affect the heart, the lungs, the liver of the calf itself. Um, if we're looking then in terms of trying to reduce the other factors, if you have feeders or even just 10 teeth feeders, 
you need to look at your mixing rate in terms of, of um, calf milk replacer. Don't just take it for granted, taking a scoop here and there. Get yourself a, a, a good measure. Get yourself a weighing scales. Weigh out your, your 125 grams. Weigh out your 875 mils of water and multiply it up. And if you're using the likes of, of a 45-gallon drum to mix it up in with a, with a, a mortar, a mortar um, whisk on it, Basically, don't put in don't put in too much water at the start. Put in a one third of your water. Put in your milk replacer and get it mixed up well, so that you don't end up with milk re milk replacer that's all kind of cruddy or clotted. So mix it up well, then top it up and keep your temperature right. Generally, we want to to get a good flow of 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 milk replacer or milk through the the abomasum. You're looking to have your temperature around 37, 38 degrees. If it's colder, it's going to take longer to go through and give bacteria more time to to multiply. Keep your feed times constant. You know, don't don't have them varying too much from day and night. Try and keep them keep them settled. And in terms of, of your milk volumes, that you're talking about generally three liters per feed. Uh, if you go higher, it's going to take longer for that milk. If you're going up to four liters, that it's going to take longer for it to go through the the abomasum. Uh, quality calf ration again when you're starting them off. Give them, give them a, a, a muesli type ration. It'll be high in molasses, but you'll have a lot of fermentable carbohydrate in it. And if you're using computerized calf feeder systems, you'll find that uh, only one calf can drink at a time. So that in terms of the ration, you don't want it too palatable because they'll have access 24 seven to it. And they'll be standing around taking in the ration and, and on computerized feeders, you tend to find the ration intake is up about 10 to 15%. Additives, what we mean by additives there, and how they may, might reduce the risk of bloat that if you are adding the likes of a, 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 an acidifier or milkshake to your whole milk or milk replacer, that in turn will reduce the flow of milk through the abomasum and giving bacteria a greater chance to, to multiply. Uh, on top of that, it might be an electrolyte or it might be something the likes of a probiotic that you're, you're adding. So you need to, to look at what effect that's going to have on the osmolality of, of the, the total mix. Um, after that, what we're talking about, access to, free, to free, fresh water or free water choice. If, you, if you're moving from one season to the other on an automatic feeder, you know, you need to, as in the picture there, you need to drain down the system. If you're using an IBC or some other type of a, a water holding device, drain it down, disinfect it with your, your sterilizer, um, clean it out. You also need to be sure that um, if, you, if you're, most dairy farmers will always tell you that they don't have a problem with water pressure on farm, but if you're if your plate cooler's running and you're washing up after milking, that's generally when calves will be in drinking and that's when the water pressure will drop. So if you have that type of situation, you need to have a pressurized vessel on, on farm to keep the pressure constant. If you're not able to get uh, two bar pressure, uh, regardless of whether it's a, a computerized feed or, or just your, your ordinary two liter bowl drinker, you need about 12 liters of water per minute to be able to give you two bar pressure. And basically when two liters go in and the calf starts to drink, uh, it needs to be filling up fairly quick, regardless of whether it's the truck at the front of the house or the back of the house. The, 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 the drinking bowls have to fill quickly and they need to be at the front and you need to check them regularly to make sure that there's, there's no meal or, or no fecal matter building up in them because that again is, is, is going to give you cause for bloat. The volume of the milk fed, there's a lot of talk with, with accelerated growth programs. Generally, we're talking about 12.5% uh, is the standard type of solid levels for milk and milk replacer or feeding three liters morning and evening. But if we look at accelerated programs, we're going up to 150 grams or 15% solids. And if we're looking at our once a day feeding type systems, again, which would be kind of a fortified milk replacer system, we're going up to 20% solids. So again, if you the more you move up the solid levels, the slower the milk is going to go through the abomasum and the greater the risk you have of bloat. If you don't have your hygiene right and your management right, you'd be as well to, to feed seven liters and stick at your 12 and a half percent. If you can't be sure that you're going to get good quality water in to balance the high concentration you're putting through the abomasum. Group size, it, it was said earlier there, the ideal type of group size you're looking at is, is um, 12 to 15 cast per pen. But again, with computerized feeders, we're shoving that to make the system economic. We're shoving it to 30 cast per pen in general, 25 to 30. Um, so that in it itself can create problems in terms of bloat. We need to be conscious that um, calves will be jostling to get into feed stations. So you can get calves going in and then getting poked in the side going out. And that is enough to, to create a kind of a, 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 an upset in, in the actual stomach of the calf and create gas, gas movement. We can also get 
areas if they're not kept clean around the feeder where calves are picking up dirty straw with coliform bacterium on it and then they're going in to drink milk and straight away they're they're getting problems with bloat and you need to keep the water troughs and the milk feeding point a, a little bit of a distance away from each other because the last thing you want is is a calf either get drinking water and then going into to, to drink milk or vice versa that the esophageal groove might be functioning correctly um big group sizes causes stress so when you're when you have 30 calves in it you need to be sure that you have a fairly decent feed plan in and that you have a um, no drafts good 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 uh, cover of straw under the calves just to keep the stress levels down other than that Stuart that's all I have to say thank you